second, sorry. Shoot, hang in for a second. Oh, I know what I need to do. Okay. Uh, first time. So in any event, I wanted to uh, welcome everybody, first of all, and, and talk a little bit about uh, something that I think many of us are, get, are involved with, and that is uh, representing our communities in, in leading a ship of minion. Um, and uh, of course, now we're in uh, very different times. I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, no, this is going by itself. Um, so that shouldn't. Oh, you're up now? Okay. Uh, and so that we're, uh, we're in a different time now. And of course, uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the unique aspects of leading a ship of minion when you're not there, but I think much of what I'm about to say, I think is still important. And um, I think as, as you guys know, uh, we FJMC created with the Cantus Assembly uh, a program to, to talk about that. And I'll talk about this more in just, in just, in just a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, I, with, the, with the four of us here, um, you know, I think, have you all uh, led a Shiva Minion representing your congregation? Has everybody done that? You, you haven't. So uh, it's, it's a very important responsibility. And I wanted to start with a little story because uh, I learned a lot from this. And that is uh, uh, when my mother died, my mother died um, over 25 years ago. So I was a young leader in FJMC at that point. And uh, so we had a Shiva Minion at my father's house in Florida. Uh, he lived in one of those uh, fifth and older communities. Uh, and his friends all came over to, to the condo. And of course, I, I being such a hotshot FJMC leader, decided to lead uh, Mincha Mariv uh, for Shiver. And I went through the entire service, uh, didn't leave out anything, uh, repeated the Amidah in the Mincha service. And the next day, nobody came. Um, because I, you know, I basically learned that it, while it was meaningful for me, um, I didn't have a sense of the family, including my father and sister, by the way, of their interests and of, and of the interest of the general community that I was at. And I think that becomes a very, very important thing when we talk about, about, uh, about doing that. Um, and so basically what I said to myself then, uh, and I, I continue to say is that um, my provided comfort to my family and to myself really should have been better and we can make it better. And I think that's what I want to talk about today. So uh, if we really say that there's only one way to have a Shiva Minion uh, and there's only one way to do it, I wrote down here, this is an exercise in futility. And this is uh, a quote from our book, which I'll talk about a little bit more. And because there's a big variation in, how, uh, in the level of Hebrew literacy in a family, uh, in the experience of prayer and observance, and you know, you need to know what what we're doing, who the family is, and and this is why you have to really have a, a different kind of approach. So, our goal, and again, you know, we're doing this virtually now. We'll talk about that later. But we really have to make each home a place where the mourners feel included, and they receive uh, needed comfort in an appropriate manner. You know, we're there representing the congregation typically. I mean, I think that this, just as an aside, is a fabulous uh, opportunity for, for our men's clubs to be, to step up and say, we will be the minion squad. Uh, I know some schools, some larger schools already have minion squads, but um, this is something that we can do just, we can do just so well. But it is important that we do this in, in a way that's sensitive and uh, provide the needed comfort. So how do we go about this? First of all, um, I think it's important to, if, if the rabbi knows the family, not always the case, of course, but if the rabbi knows the family and uh, uh, they will actually learn a little bit something about the family if they perform the funeral because they'll have met with the family uh, right after the death. But to get some information from them um, about, you know, is the family, do they, do they read Hebrew? Uh, uh, do they understand what's 
going to service. Um, because that's going to help you determine as to what kind of service you're going to do. Um, and the point is that we all need to be flexible. Uh, we need to adjust the service according to the needs of the mourners who may not be able to read Hebrew. I mean, it's one thing to hand them a prayer book and for you to stand there in the front and daven in beautifully. Um, wait one second. I just need to close the door. Dog was about to bark, so I wanted to save that noise. In any event, um, so we need to uh, to be able to know what's going on with the family, and to say, you know, if they're not going to be able to read Hebrew, for us to sit there and daven in Hebrew the whole service is not going to be very meaningful for them. Um, we also want to be sure before you go over there that the uh, uh, booklets. Some some synagogues have booklets. Some synagogues have actual sidurim that they're there. Uh, I know that's a simple point, but again, it's, you hate to come into a house and start creating surahs when it doesn't need to be. And then finally, before you go, you know, if you're assigned to do the minion on a certain night, call them and introduce yourself, let them know what time you're gonna be there. And also ask them, I mean, they may have a family member who would like to do this. And uh, so you can be there as a, as a comforting uh, fellow congregate, um, uh, or you may want to have a family member who takes a part, say, would you like to have somebody read an English prayer? Um, in some um, particularly observant families, um, some families will have someone who will want to do a little teaching of, of, of something from uh, Mishnah or Torah or whatever. Uh, but again, calling ahead and, and just getting a sense of what they want will go a long way to making that experience um, a, a good one. Um, and I just, you know, again, I can't emphasize enough. Our, our purpose is not to be a great uh, prayer leader. Of course, you should be a good prayer leader, but your purpose, our purpose is to be a comforter of the bereaved. Um, that we're there to make sure that they feel better, that, that they are in a, in a community that is being there for them. So uh, one of the things that's really important, I think, is, and, and this is a little bit of the theater of, of, of creating a service. Uh, and, and that is to, where you stand is important. Um, if you're leading the prayers, um, it's not like, you know, in, in some synagogues where, they, where the prayer leader is in one end of the room and everybody else is sort of stacked up in chairs behind it, it you should be central to the event and you should be close to the mourners. Again, this does work obviously when we're on Zoom, um, but, you should be close to the mourners in touching distance. Uh, it also allows you to sometimes give them some guidance if they need to stand or if, if, they, if they've been sitting or if they need to turn a page. Um, and it also creates a mood that you're there for comfort. You're not performing uh, just... Um, thing is, uh, there's, it's important to be somewhat flexible. Uh, if... Uh, uh, you know, one of the key members of the family hasn't gotten there, wait until they get there. I mean, you know, within reason. I mean, you know, you know if they're an hour away, it's not going to work because everybody's been asked to come at seven o'clock or whatever time you call the minion for. But I think it's important to be have some degree of flexibility. Again, this isn't about us. It's really about, um, it's really about them. And one of the things, particularly if you know, if you know the, the person who's died, um, during the course of the service, stop for a moment and say something about the person who's died, particularly you know, if you knew them. Obviously, if you didn't know them, it's, it's a little difficult. You can certainly ask somebody to say something. You're not asking for a full eulogy. That took place at the service. Um, but just to say, you know, uh, I'm really here, pleased to be here today to, to uh, you know, remember my, you know, uh, Joe so-and-so, uh, I remember that whenever uh, we saw him at the, at the cutting bagels, you know, he had his own way of cutting bagels or something, you know, just something that just make, makes it a, a personal um, experience. And finally, um, I wanted to, uh, uh, I wanted to say that, uh, uh, it, it's nice to have sort of a, a script for what you may say at the end. And, and, I, and this is one that uh, we proposed 
Uh, although one need not thank people for coming to fill this mitzvah, I hope you sense the importance of your being presence here tonight. And to say you're invited to remain for another short period of time to be with the family and share your memories with them. And we'll be here again tomorrow at seven o'clock, so on and so forth. I mean, I think it's good to have something that has some closure to the to the uh, to the event. Um, so, what do you need to do? For, to be, because if you don't do this well, it becomes an uncomfortable situation. And so, if you're going to be leading a shiva minion, I think you need to be a good Hebrew reader, um, and you need to be comfortable in doing this. I think if you are uh, it's not the time to do something you've never done before uh, without some practice. Um, because really the mourners, and, and you know, again, I think my experience is that many of the times that I've gone into a home, um, these people are not often regular uh, daveners and they're relying on us to be a guide. And sometimes they'll pray vicariously through us. So you wanna be uh, confident and you wanna express that confidence and, and, and exude that confidence. Uh, because otherwise you interrupt the comforting mood of the service. And I, I just think that's an important thing. Um, the other thing is um, to not put up your face in the book. You know, you're, you're a gentle guide. You're, you have to be, show concern. You have to be a leader, but you have to be part of the, uh, of the group and really establishing uh, the necessary mood. Uh, because otherwise, uh, we won't. We won't be. We won't be comforting. Bob, uh, can I ask you a question? Can I interrupt you? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Gary. Um, you, you mentioned you don't. You do need to be a, a competent uh, Hebrew reader, and I, I understand that. Um, is there specifics that you absolutely have to do when you're reading when you're doing the service, or can you create the service based on your conversations with the with the um, with the, the bereaved. In other words, do you have certain things you have to go through when you do the service? Yes, and you know, and I, can you hear me? Because I just realized that my yeah. headphones weren't working. Um, I, I, I wasn't planning to talk specifically about the service um, um, just because we, we, we felt that the, the topic per se today would be more about an overall view of comfort. But let me just say that um, in, um, uh, the, um, the, the, the booklet that we put together, um, creating a minion of comfort, uh, you know, I think, I think you all know Steve Storr, or many of you know Steve Storr, uh, he, he wrote this on behalf of the Cantus Assembly with us. Um, and in that book is, a, is are a number of, of sample services, uh, in answer to your question, Gary, you know, that, um, you know, knowing the sense of the, of the community, it gives you a chance of what to do. You know, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, when I did this uh, minion for uh, when my mother died and I included every word of every page, um, that was um, not appropriate for the, for the family that my family and my, 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 my father's friends. Um, but that's one option when you're in a place where it is appropriate. On the other hand, um, you know, there's, in many synagogues, for instance, when they do Mincha Maruv, they'll do Ashrei and Numerus Kaddish, and then they'll do a, a Maruv. And in some cases, they'll just do Maruv. I mean, many of these uh, Shiva minions happen in the evening. And um, I think flexibility is the key thing. It's, it's more about comfort, in, in my view anyway, and this is me speaking personally, I'm not speaking for the movement or anything, but it's not as, as much about Halakha as it is about comfort. And they really want to have a if, if they want to have a service, they want to have a service where they have the opportunity to say Kaddish. And so that, you know, a bare minimum in, in Maru, for instance, is to say the Shema, to say the Amidah, um, and, and to say Olenu and, 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 and uh, Kaddish. I mean, but again, in, in this booklet, and this is, this is one of our, I think, a, one of our really good publications, um, it, it gives you an outline of several options depending on what the family um, is doing. So. I would, I would certainly recommend that to your, um, you know, for, to have on hand. And um, the, uh, well, before, I, before I talk about this, I just want to say uh, also that um, what we did at, um, I, don't, I guess it was two conventions ago, was to have a training session to certify uh, people to be minion leaders and using this booklet. 
in addition to, to um, the kind of comfort measures that I've been speaking about today, we actually did train people to, to be sure that that they were comfortable in actually leading the service and the works and so on and so forth. Um, so, so, so that um, somebody's whistling. I'll uh, take care. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I, uh, uh, I, I think that that's something that, you know, I, we haven't heard talk about lately on in the men's club le level, but I think that's something that we really can consider rethinking and rebringing back is this idea of being the men, have the men's clubs be leaders in saying, we're going to train a cohort. It doesn't have to be just men, but we're going to take the lead in training a cohort of people of being um, trained, uh, sensitive, and appropriate of uh, uh, people who can create a, a minion of comfort, a Shiva minion. Um, and, you know, all the tools are in this little booklet. Uh, and I think that's something that we can, um, that we can be doing. Um, the other book that, um, oops, the other book that I just wanted to mention is an oldie but goodie. And this is from our Art of Jewish Living series. Um, and that's a time to mourn, a time to comfort. If you haven't seen this book, you know, you know Ron Wolfson is just one of my favorite people in the world. And um, what he does here is talk about the kinds of things, and this goes beyond creating a shiver minion, but just creating a, 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 an atmosphere of comfort, things that, what to say and what not to say, and uh, what's appropriate during the time uh, after a death and during that first week and, and, and beyond. Um, I, I, we, uh, one of our clubs in, in my region, uh, bought, used to buy this book by the case, and whenever there was a death in the community, they would give this book to the family because, again, most families just don't know the rules, and they don't know, particularly the first time around, they don't know the rules, they don't know the traditions, um, they don't know what they're supposed to do, and um, so part of the book is how to how to be a mourner, uh, what you know, what's appropriate, and the other part of the book is how to be a comforter, how to be a visitor. Um, and for all of us, uh, this kind of book is very helpful. So I'm, I'm very, um, I, you know, again, it's, it's an oldie but goodie, but it's something that I, I'm, I can recommend very enthusiastically. Um, so here we are now in the middle of this pandemic and uh, we can't go to the homes. Um, it's just not appropriate. We're all, you know, we just, we can't be grouping together. Uh, um, and uh, so that, Shivas have to be virtual, um, but we can do that. I mean, many people, all of us now have been doing a ton of Zoom meetings um, for one thing or another. I was just on one this morning for something else, and now here I am. And so people are getting used to the idea of, of virtual communication, but we can still reach out to each other through Zoom. It's not as personal as a hug, but it's better than nothing. And that is to invite the family and friends to a Zoom meeting at a certain time, and to say something about the person who's died and to say, we're going to have a service and to lead the service uh, and to do the things that we talked about in that kind of comforting way. Uh, I think, again, this requires some coordination. It requires um, uh, speaking with the family ahead of time uh, so they know what's going on and um, getting email addresses from their contact list. This isn't something they should be doing. Uh, you can do this for them, or, um, and that is to, is to create the Zoom meeting. Um, um, I think some of you on the call have created Zoom meetings. If you haven't, um, you can get a free Zoom account, um, uh, and that will get you a 40, you can have a 40 minute meeting um, for free without having to pay for Zoom. Um, and for people who want to have a longer meeting, if uh, there's a $14.99 a month, uh, fee and you can do this for the, for instance, if you do it for just one month, it will cover the week of Shiva. Um, uh, I personally have a Zoom account of my own just because there's so many Zoom meetings now to have. Um, and if you pay for the, it's not that much money, it allows you to have uh, uh, much longer meetings and extraordinary number of participants. So I think the, the principles that I mentioned in this, um, in what I've been speaking about, apply whether you're on Zoom or whether you're in person. Um, being on Zoom is a, is a challenge for all of us, but at the same time, um, it, it does allow that, that necessary comfort to be done. Um, and I think that, you know, again, um, it, particularly in these times, it may be that we need as um, synagogue leaders to, 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 talk to talk to the leadership of our community and say, what are we doing for Shiva Minions? Because they can't stop. Um, 
And uh, I think this is a, a very important thing. Um, one of the things that you can do on a Zoom meeting, you know, you're looking at a PowerPoint that I put together. Um, this PowerPoint is on my desktop. Um, and so Zoom allows you to share your desktop. Um, um, and to, you just have to be sure that you're sharing the right desktop. Um, you know, I, uh, some people will share their whole desktop and they'll have their email and everything else on there. So you have to be a little cautious about that. But you can share a desktop image of a Sidur. Um, right now, a rabbinical assembly is allowing people to download for free um, some of their various publications, Sidur publications, just for this reason. So sharing that, you know, if everybody has this going in front of them, because people may not have a Sidur at home. Most people probably don't. So you can do that. Um, the other thing is uh, thinking ahead about assigning people to tell their stories and share their memories. So it, it, this requires a little more coordination. Um, this is sort of like what many of us are doing with our uh, virtual seders uh, next week, and that is assigning parts ahead of time so people are ready to talk when it's their when it's their turn. Um, and you know, one of the big rules, particularly about a, a bigger Zoom meeting, is to be sure that everybody is on mute. Um, if you are the host of the meeting, you can mute everybody, um, but uh, you just want to make sure that everybody is on mute so. Um, you don't hear all the noise in the background. Um, I think that's, you know, when you have a large Zoom meeting, when people aren't on mute, it becomes very distracting. So, you know, these are some of the basic uh, rules about, about Zoom meetings. And again, this may make you want to have a shorter, um, a shorter service because um, people's attention span when they're on their computers a little bit less. Um, so I am, uh, uh, I'm finished with what I wanted to say um, uh, and, and just see if you have any comments or questions about what I've said. And uh, I just threw this last one up on the screen, which has a, a link to the spreadsheet with the upcoming seminars, although I think many of us are getting email from FJMC and uh, uh, with, with, with these, with the seminars as they come up. But any questions, comments? Where do you get the book at? Um, I believe that it's available. You know, I should have looked this up, Gary. Um, I believe that it's available on the FJMC store. I'm gonna take this down and uh, I'm gonna look just while we're asking. Um, and I don't know actually how our store is working these days. Yeah, it's, 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 it's on our store. Um, and I'll share this. Let's go back here. I don't know if the store has any, but uh, Jewish Lights had uh, we had sold the rights to them, and they may have it listed. Well, Jewish Lights has the has the um, Jewish Lights has the um, Art of Jewish Living, but the the store um, um, has has the um, the FJMC. Um, this is the store um, page, um, and it does have the uh, the Shiva Minion book there. Um, so um, they show the art of Jewish living. I don't know if we still sell it, but um, it, it it lists there on the store. And of course, with the office being closed, I don't know how that would how all that works. But but I would um, at least that's an option. Um, I believe, Bob, that some of the some of the material is, is available on Amazon. That is, you go in our store and then they throw you over to Amazon. Throw you over to Amazon. That may very well be. I, I mean, I know some of the Art of Jewish Living stuff that I did is on Amazon. Um, there's a dog walking by my front window. I'm, I'm in New Hampshire, so we're out in the woods a little bit. And whenever, whenever someone walks by, my dog likes to greet them. You know, those guys in the background are really amazingly still. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Well, they were. They were. They haven't even said a word yet. Yeah, they're mesmerized by my. Uh, by my. Well, obviously. Yeah, this <laughs> was a. This was a wonderful outdoor minion we had at the Washington D.C. convention. Um, uh, it was such a treat. It's such, I don't know. It's something special about davening outside. Uh, yeah. And that was. Uh, that was that was us then. Uh, I don't even know if I'm in the picture. I may have taken it, but. Um, Zoom does allow you to have what they call a virtual background, which is what this is. Um, it's under, under preferences. 
So I have, depending on who I'm speaking with, I have different virtual backgrounds. So <laughs> this is all I'm touch that for today. Any other questions or, or concerns? Well, I, I want to thank you all for, for joining me. Um, uh, you know, uh, these, these talks are all being recorded. And uh, so that if you found that it was helpful and said a friend of mine really wanted to come, uh, refer them to, our, to that uh, web page I gave you a minute ago, and um, um, they can take a listen to the recording once Alan gets it up. And Alan, thank you so much for organizing this. And you're sitting in on all of these, and it's a human's effort, and I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Bob, for presenting. You did a fantastic job. Thank you all to all the participants. Please be, please be safe and have a good day. I'm going to turn off the recording now. Okay. I wish have everybody a, a joy. <clears throat> and uh, yes. uh, your virtual set, I think many of us will be in virtual Seder next week. Yes, indeed we will. That will be uh, uh,